Hey Coder, so by now you have a front end written in Quick, you have a back end written with Node Express, and the two are joined together with Nginx, which is really cool because now authentication becomes a lot easier. Now in this video, what we're actually going to do is enable us to go ahead and store cookies on the server side, because you'll notice when you actually refresh the browser or hit enter in the URL of your tab, it refreshes the app. And so you lose information about your authentication and your login. So I'm going to show you how to store cookies, HTTP only cookies, in other words, cookies that can't be tampered with in the browser so that your user, when they refresh the page, etc., they're still authenticated, they can still make requests to the back end, etc., and they're not gonna have a poor user experience. So I'm gonna show you how to store those cookies in this video. And then after that, we're going to protect our route. So our members only route, where somebody tries to access that route, maybe they try to access it maliciously, or they don't want to pay for your services or whatever it is. There are some bad actors, you do need to protect your routes, etc. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the session after. With that said, the first thing that you need to go and do is head over to Superbase. Because remember, now that we're running Nginx, our URL has changed, we're no longer doing port 5173, we're doing port 80. So just change it here to port 80 and add that as a redirect here in terms of the redirect URLs. The other update that I've made is I've changed the redirect URL so that when you do a GitHub login or you do an email login, it goes to HTTP localhost forward slash login forward slash staging. And it's the same on the sign up page as well. So I've gone and made those two changes. Whenever you make a change, go npm run build and then do npm run deploy as well so that those changes are baked in. But what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to our backend. So I'm going to close those two tabs down. We're going to head over to our backend and we're going to build out the ability for your application to store cookies server side. And the way that that's going to work is very simply what's going to happen is your front end in your root when it finds out ah this person is actually now logged in, they're authenticated, etc. It's going to send that request to go and store the cookie information here server side. So that's basically what that's going to do over there. All right, so I'm actually going to start here with our front end side. So in terms of the code, let's go over here to the root. And one thing I want to do is add in Axios. So let's just get out of this. I'm going to go sorry, not yarn, I'm using npm for the front end npm install Axios as follows. And then we should be able to bring Axios in I actually really had Axios installed. But this is what we're going to use for making requests. So here we're saying if event is signed in, what I'm going to do is say if event is signed in and session, there's a session with an access token, because this is what Superbase provides us. And there's a session here with a refresh token, like such, then I want to go ahead and run this script that we have below. And now remember, we put a note here to say that we need to go and store our cookies server side. So that's what we're going to do here, I'm going to say Axios. And that's going to be await Axios. I also need to import Axios up here. So let's go import Axios from Axios as follows. And we need to make a post request, we haven't created the route yet that we're going to make that request to. But here, I'm just going to call it something like API underscore v1, because that's what tells nginx where to go and send this request. And we're going to send it here to store dash auth as follows. Great. Now we need to send this with a body, which we've not created yet. So we'll do that now. And we also need to send it with credentials as true. So this is more of like a cross origin resource sharing type thing. Now let's neaten that up, change that to with credentials. And over here, I want to create my body. So actually, what I'm going to do here is say const body is going to be equal to an object with an access token. And that access token will be session dot access underscore token like follows. And also we want the refresh token like such so that will get stored there in a refresh token item. There you go. So here is our body. And here we're actually sending the request. So send request to server 
as follows. And so this is going to go to API v1 store auth. We'll create that route in a moment. So what happens when that's successful? We'll need a response. And that is going to be as follows. We'll say console.log. And here we'll put response.data when there's a response, just to check that's working. And then dot .catch, what we're going to do if there's an error, is we're going to console.log the error as follows as well. Great, let's neaten up that code a bit. And so what we're also going to do is just cut this here and only store that the user's logged in if this was also successful. So I'm going to have the front end go and do its thing here and store what we put earlier only when this returns a positive response, i.e. something that should have happened, happened. Excellent. Now that we know we're going to make that call when somebody goes and logs in, what I also want to go and do is set up my backend side. So what I'm going to do is copy this. In fact, let's name it here health. And this here is going to be store auth, in, uh, auth or here I'll put auth cookies. And let's copy and paste that as follows. Now we need to change get to a post request. And we said we would call this store dash auth like such. Now I'm not going to return this response here. Instead, what I'm going to do is return an error to say missing tokens or token like follows. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say here, if let's say our request dot body, because there should be a body dot access token, access token like follows, because that's what we called it. And we should say if there's not one of those, then we want to return an error. Or same thing, if there's not a refresh token like follows, then again, we're going to return this error. So here we're going to put a guard ensure tokens like such. Great. So if that wasn't an issue, then we can carry on. And so we're going to say const access token is going to be equal to session dot body dot access token. And our refresh token is going to be the same. In fact, that's not session. That's going to be our request dot body. Sorry. And that's going to be our refresh token here. So here, this is just to get tokens. Now let's determine the expiration of those tokens. So here I'm going to put determine expiration. Const date access is going to be equal to new date, like such. And the same here for refresh. So what I'm going to do is set the cookie for the access token to expire in one hour and the refresh token to expire in one day. You can have it set however you want, but I'm just doing this pretty much in line with how Superbase works, or at least how I think Superbase works. So here I'm going to say data access dot set hours, and that is going to be open and close parentheses, date access dot get hours like such plus one. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for our refresh token. So this will be date refresh like such. And this will be not dot get hours. This will be dot set date and get date. Brilliant. And then let's set our response. So set cookies and that will be response dot cookie. And I'm going to call this as such server dash access dash token you can call it however I want to really but I want to call it server access token. And then here I'm going to pass in access token like such with the following criteria as an object. So will the cookie be secure? Well, that depends whether we're in development mode or production mode. So here I'm going to put process dot env dot and let me just check here node environment development. So this here will be node underscore env is equal to development. And we want this to be not equal to development. So we'll set this to be secure if the process environment is basically production. So that's what will determine secure, right? HTTP only is going to be equal to true expires will be date access and same site will be lax as follows. Now, if for any reason you have an issue as well, just check your cookie parser here is installed too, as that might impact the outcome of this. And then here, what I want to do, that's going to be our access token. 
I also want to do one here for our refresh token. So we'll just copy that. Access will then just simply become refresh. And this will be date refresh like such. Excellent. Let's go and format that. And now that those will be set, we can return our response as well as a successful response. And we'll say here, return response. And this will be a 200 success. And that will be tokens stored. Great. So this is our backend. And this is how it's going to store those tokens. But also what about if a user logs out, right? So if a user signed out of our application, we also want to remove those tokens. So let's also create a route. So I'm going to copy this health one again. And here we're going to call this a logout. And we'll leave this as a get now because we don't need to send any data to log out. So here what I'm going to do is just go log out. We'll keep the storing of the auth cookies as opposed to the logout as a get. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to say sponsor res .cookie. And that now is going to be here. What did we create? Our server access token, for example, needs to be set with expires. And that should be set with date dot now. And let's do the same here for our refresh token. So this will handle actually expiring or killing our cookies when somebody clicks log out. And our response here should be cookies expired. Brilliant. Now what I need to do is go and yarn start this again to make sure that those changes are picked up. And let's go here and look at our route here. We've got a response that will print the data over here and show the user as being logged in. So let's head over to our application. I'm going to go here to my login page. I'm just going to refresh the application. So something's gone wrong there. Oh, my front end here. Let me just go and run npm run build this. And let's go npm run deploy as follows as well. Now let's go over here to log in login as follows. Right, great. So that should now send an email here. There it is. And if I click on that link, I'm now redirected to the dashboard. Let me just go and view here the developer tools and go back to the home page. Let's go here to application cookies. Now we're not seeing any cookies here. They are stored because I'm on this tab. If I go back and click on this tab and click on the home page and go to view developer developer tools. And remember from the prior videos, it's very tricky when you're doing this because the way cookies are shown and stored and where they shown and stored all changes. Now look at this is very interesting. Here we can see we have our server refresh and access cookies here stored. And if I go over here back to this page here, you can see they've now appeared there because I've clicked on and off the tab, it's caused that listener function to run. And you can see that they are actually stored and showing. So that is working. Now what happens if I refresh the browser? Well, what's happened is my server side cookies are still here. They're still there. They haven't been removed. But Code Raiders thinks or our front end now thinks that our session has disappeared. So the good news is our back end is working absolutely fine. But we just need to change a few things on our front end to make sure that it gets the session, etc. And can see that this person in fact, is a real person and they are still logged in. So we need to persist that storage. What I'm going to do is create another use client effect here. And I'm going to have it actually go and call Superbase. it's going to go const something like data error, like follows is equal to Superbase, And that's going to be dot auth dot get user. And this will go and check if there's a session. And if not, I think it should go and create one. So let's just see here, we need to put a wait here and make this an asynchronous function as follows. And let's just go console.log data and console.log error like such. Now let's go and build those changes in and deploy and head back over here and hit refresh. Here we can see we have our Superbase token here and our Superbase refresh. And we have our server refresh and our server access. So if I refresh the browser, 
then that information is now stored as follows by calling this get user. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here that if there's data, let's console log the data for now. If data console.log data. Now we can see here that it returns a user object. So here's user and we have an ID. So user ID. Brilliant. This is excellent. It's exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do here is say if data, then let's go and store our session information here as follows. We will go and do the exact opposite. We will remove here the session information like such. Brilliant. And instead of calling session here, this will be data.user.id. And so here we'll just say if data.user.id and if data at all, because there needs to be a data object returned. And so here I can get rid of those question marks over here. Right. Let's go and cancel this. Let's go and npm run build. And it's saying errors never used. So we can remove error over here. And it's also saying on row 19, this E from express, that must have been something that just popped in. So let's get rid of that over there. Let's go and npm run build again. And let's go and npm run deploy. Go back to my browser, refresh the window. And there we go. We are now logged in. We can see that we have access to the dashboard, etc. So we are now persisting our state. And if, in fact, if I refresh that, you'll see it goes to not being logged in to logged in pretty quickly. Now, what happens if I click log out? Well, if I do that, what I also need to do is on the front end, I need to go and call the sign out. So sign out user on server as well. So what I'm going to do here is copy our Axios code that we had here. And that's not going to be Axios post, it's going to be Axios get, and that's going to be log out as follows. We don't need a body or any of that jazz there. We just need this as follows. And again, we can console.log the data. And this session here, we can cut from down here and replace this with that. Because then we should be removing whether or not that user is actually signed in here on our front end. So here, if the event goes to signed out, we will log out. That will call this function here and it should essentially log that user out on the server side as well as the front end side. Right, that's great. Let's go and npm run build that and npm run deploy. Let's refresh our page here. Right, that user's still signed in. We can see if I click log out, there you go, that user's logged out. And if I refresh the page, you can see that that session has been destroyed. It still doesn't work. So even though I can see these cookies here, and if I was to close this browser and reopen it, etc., let's actually show you that. If I close the browser and I go back here into localhost, let's go to view developer, developer tools. You can see here those cookies are gone. Right? There's there's no cookies there. They're all they're all gone. If I refresh the page, still the only thing we now have is the superbase refresh and the superbase access token that was given to us here when we went here and called get user, right? So that's where that has come from over there, but we are still not signed in. And why is that you might say? Well, let's go and show you. If I go in console.log that data over here, and let's just go npm run build, and npm run deploy. Now, when I go and refresh this and go to console, you can see here, there is no user. There's nothing there being refreshed. There's nothing there that they're picking up. Now let's test our login. So if I go to here to login and here we should get our link. I click on that link. All right, here, everything seems to be working as it should. I can go straight to the dashboard, etc. Now we still have the same problem. Let's go back here to the home page. We still have the same problem that if I log out, so my user's now logged out here, you can see I got my message cookies expired, etc. Great. If I click on dashboard, I can still get there. And so what we now need to do, and I'm going to do it in another video because I wanted to spend more time on this talking about cookies and setting cookies, etc., is we're going to go and protect the actual route and it won't take us very long. So if you think about it, we had to do a ton of work just to go and have us be able to have a front end, talk to a back end, 
without having any cause issues, everything happening on the same domain, etc. Being able to check authentication or log a user out, etc. All of that to be able just to protect one route. And in other series that I'll do on this channel, I'm actually exploring other ways not to have to deal with all of those sort of headaches. But this is pretty fundamental, right? If you're building an application, a user needs to be able to say they are who they say they are, and they need to be able to access and log into things, especially if they're paying for them. They want to know that other people can't just get what they're paying for for free as well. So it's not just about your site being hacked, it's about things being fair for all. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is set up our membership page, our dashboard, so that if somebody isn't signed in, both from a front end and a back end perspective, out they go. Now, if you're getting tired of authentication and the headaches that come with that, because there are a lot, I really, really do understand. But remember to just shut up and code.